Let's do a partial fraction for this one first. 1 over 1 minus x to the fourth power. So first, we have to factor the denominator, and this is the same as saying 1 to the second power minus x squared to the second power. So we can factor this as 1 minus x squared times 1 plus x squared, right? And this is done, but this is not. We can keep factor this. 1 minus x squared is the same as 1 plus x times 1 minus x, and then we have this, 1 plus x squared, okay? And now we know we can break down this fraction into three little ones, and they will have this, this, and that for the denominator. So for the first one, we are going to have something over 1 plus x. And we know 1 plus x is linear. That means on the top, we must have just a number. So we will just put down a capital A for the unknown number at the moment. The second fraction, let me combine this with something on the top over 1 minus x. And this is also linear, so on the top, it's just going to be another number. Let me put down capital B. At the end, we have the third fraction with 1 plus x squared for the denominator, right? But then, this is quadratic. That means on the top, it has to be a linear. Keep in mind, the top always has to be exactly one degree less than the bottom. So on the top, we will have linear, and let me use c times x plus d, okay? So we have these three little fractions, and our goal now is to figure out what's a, b, c, and d. a and b are easy, because we can do it by the cover arm method. And let me show you. So to figure out a, look for the denominator, which is 1 plus x, right? What you have to do is refer back to the original fraction, pay attention to the factor form only, and then we are going to cover up the same denominator with your hand, with your finger, up to you. So I'm going to cover up the 1 plus x, and then we have to ask ourselves, how can we make our hand equal to 0? What do we have to plug in right here to make this factor equal to 0? 1 plus x is equal to 0, that means x has to be negative 1. So I cover this up, x is equal to negative 1, and then you have to plug in negative 1 into all the rest of the x right here. And let's do this in our head. On the top, we have 1, so we know a has to be 1 over something. But then on the bottom, we have 1 minus negative 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2, times 1 plus parentheses negative 1 inside to a second power, which is going to be 1 right here again, plus another 1 is another 2. 2 times 2 is 4, okay? So once again, plugging this, uh, x is equal to negative 1 to here and here, and then work it out. You can do this in your head. This is going to be altogether 1 over 4 for the a. And do the same thing for the b. Look for the denominator, which is 1 minus x. And then we refer back to the original fraction in factor the form. And we cover up the same factor, which is the 1 minus x. And then you ask yourself, how can you make your hand equal to 0? Well, you have to plug in x is equal to 1 right here to make this factor equal to 0, right? But then, you have to do that for the rest of the x to figure out the b value. Okay, 1 on the top, okay. On the bottom here, we have 1 plus 1, which is 2. And then this is 1 plus 1 squared, which is another 2. And 2 times 2, we have 4. So, for b, we have also 1 over 2. All right, so whenever we have linear factors like this, and keep in mind, it cannot be repeated. This has to match exactly what we have um, in the original right here, okay? We can use the cover up method, and I may show you guys the other situations later on. But then let's finish this first. So A is one fourth, and B is also one fourth. However, for C and D, we cannot use cover up method anymore because if you cover this up, I cannot make this factor equal to zero with real numbers. So, well, of course, you can use complex number, but that's not good there. So now, how can we find out the value for C and D? And let me show you guys this way. First, we have to keep in mind of the x values that we have used so far. We used it negative one right here with the cover up, and we also used the positive one right here with the cover up. So we are not allowed to use them anymore. Now we have to think about the x values. That's easy enough. And then we are just going to plug it into this equation so that we don't see that x anymore. So we use negative 1, we use positive 1. 
What's another easy for you for x? Zero. Yeah, we haven't used zero, right? So let me just write this down right here. Let x is equal to zero. And then I'm just going to plug in zero into the original right here. It's easier. One over one minus zero to the fourth power. And this is going to give us the following. For this right here, we know a is one over four already. And then we have this over one plus x is the zero. I'm going to plug in right here. And then we'll keep going. Plus b is also one over four, just by consider. One is one minus x is zero. And then plug in zero into this x and x. Really nice, because c times zero, we don't need to worry about c in this equation. Plus d over one plus zero square. Right, this is my d. Okay, on the left hand side we have one, and this is one fourth plus another one over four, and then this is plus, this is zero, d over one, just d. And you see, this is one is equal to one half, plus d, and then we can just subtract one half on both sides, we know d is equal to one half, right? Okay, so we use zero, one, negative one already, what can we do next? Maybe let's use two, right? x is equal to two, it's also easy enough. And now let me erase this right here. So now let's let x is equal to two. We have not yet used two, so this is okay. And two is okay, it's not that bad, right? And you can plug in two into this x right here, or this right here, up to you. I will choose to plug in two right here. Just need to work out this value when x is equal to two, right here. Anyways, one over one minus two to the fourth power, this is going to give us, we know a is one over four already, so we can plug in one over four. And this is over one plus x is two, that we said it, and then plus, B is also 1 over 4 over 1 minus x is 2 right here. And then we have the plus. C we still don't know yet. So we have C times x is the 2. And then D is 1 half. So we add it with 1 half on the top. All over 1 is the 1 plus the x is the 2. So we have the 2 squared like this. And now we just have to deal with this fraction equation. So right here, 1 over 1 minus 16 right here right so this is 1 over negative 15 and this is equal to 1 over 4 over 3 which is going to be 1 over 12 right and then 1 over 4 over negative 1 we have minus 1 over 4 and then for this part i'm just going to write this plus 2c plus 1 half over 1 plus 4 which is 5. okay how can we deal with the fraction equation Okay, let's just multiply everything by the lowest common denominator. We have the 4, 12, 15, and the 5. So it will be 60. Let's multiply everything by 60. Okay? 60 times 1 over negative 15, we get negative 4. And this is equal to 60 times 1 over 12, we get 5. And then minus 60 times 1 over 4, we get 15. And then do the last one carefully, because when you do 60 times 5, this and that cancel, so you have 12, right? 60 over 5 is 12, and then you do 12 times 2c, we get plus 24c. And then we have the 12 times 1 half, which is going to be plus 6. And then we have to just deal with this, right? So on the left hand side for negative 4, this is equal to 5 minus 15 is negative 10, plus 6 is negative 4. So we have negative 4 and then plus 24c. And we can just add the 4 on both sides. We know 0 is equal to 24c. So therefore, c is equal to what? 0. <laughs> Divide 24 on both sides. So that means this term is going to turn out to be 0. So let me write down the whole partial fraction decomposition for you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, 1 over 1 minus x to the fourth power is equal to, let me put down 1 over 4 on the top, over 1 plus x. And then for the next one, we add it with 1 over 4 on the top over 1 minus x. And then for the last one, you see c is equal to 0, 0 times x. This disappears, right? So we only have 1 half on the top. So we add 1 half on the top over 1 plus x squared. And I know these are complex fractions. We should have put down the 4 in the denominator and use a parenthesis, right? But this is still an integration question. We are going to integrate 1 over 1 minus x to the fourth power, but then we don't want to integrate this part. We want to integrate these three fractions, and they are equivalent anyways. We can deal with this much better. 
So let's go ahead and finish it. One over four, it's just a constant multiple, so we can put it down one over four. And then we are going to integrate one over one plus x, and that's going to give us ln absolute value one plus x. And you have to check the derivative of right here. The derivative of one plus x is just one, so it doesn't matter. Next one, let me put down the one over four first. And then the integral of one over one minus x is ln absolute value one minus x, right? But in this case here, the derivative of 1 minus x is negative 1. So we have to divide it by negative 1. And that's going to make this become a subtraction. And then for the last one, let's put down the 1 half. So we add the 1 half. And the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared is the inverse tangent x. OK? And if you would like, you can combine these two lns together. But this is OK. Let's put down plus c all the way at the end. And this right here is it. 